Good afternoon. I'm Coach Brian Abbey, head football coach here at Grief High School. And I know uh, got a lot of people in the house today that hear the news and uh, watch these guys sign their letters in the tent. It's a little different how we do it uh, here at Grief High School. We, uh, you know, usually have multiple sports, but today since we have nine guys signing football, it's all us. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk about each kid, you know, the, their, the school they're signing to and like some stats and what, what conference they, they play in. And then I'll say a couple words about, about uh, the students uh, themselves. Um, bottom line about this group, and I got a couple things I'm gonna read, is just, just things I feel like I need to share. Uh, one of the best groups I've been around, one of the most talented groups I've been around, and just some of the, the best you know, kids that I've been around. The way they interact with each other, the way they interact with teammates, interact with the uh, community. Um, I, I can't count how many times I, I've got praise some to me about my players and, and a lot of these guys up here on the stage. Uh, today we have, we're, we're gathering to see nine senior sign letters of intent to some of the finest institutions in America. Uh, this life-changing opportunity has come from hours of hard work and sacrifice for these young men and their families. And we are so proud and grateful for all of them to have done this uh, for our program. Your <coughs> football class of 2023 has a four-year record of 49-5. They are two-time uh, state champions, 2020-2021, six state champions, as well as three-time region champions. This senior class continues the great tradition of intangibles that are the cornerstone of youth football, the ability to grab onto one another, to play the full effort from snap to whistle, and with the poise and the class expected as, as a part of the youth football family. We congratulate this year's senior class and thank, and thank them for their contributions to our program as they continue to write their own legacy uh, in Glory Land and beyond Glory Land. So we know Coach Davis will tell you, we want these guys to come back. We want them to pour back into the guys that, that are going to play their position behind them, where their numbers behind them, and um, they, they, they know how special it is when guys came back and talk to them, so I know they're going to come back and do the same. Uh, before I start going through and announcing each kid, they're going to they're sign you know, their letter in front of them um, after I finish talking about them. But I do want to say a special thank you to the parents, first off, dropping guys off and, and feed them to do everything that we needed them to do as a program and everything their kids need them to do since they were six years old, putting on a helmet backwards and stuff like that. Just, I want to say thank you to all our parents. I have a special group this year, and I appreciate you guys standing in the gap with me with these guys over the last four years. Um, and also a special thank you to Coach Davis. No one understands the amount of work this man puts in uh, for this day to happen, for these kids have these opportunities. Um, you know, countless hours, uh, the, the multiple cell phones, uh, the phone calls in the middle of the night, <laughs> you know, everything that he does to, to help these kids get to where they get to. Uh, all these parents tell you, all these kids to tell you, he's a, he's a thankless guy in, in, in these situations. He, he does a great job. He takes a lot of weight off of my shoulders as the head football coach in this program. So I want to say a special thank you to him. And also, I want him to say some words about some things. Parents are in here for young kids and just anybody. You know, if your kids in fourth grade, right now, this thing is changing. And he's he's a, he's a, he's a you know expert in youth of Georgia on what's going on with recruiting. So I think it's a couple words that he wants to say, and I think he needs to say that, that a lot of people need to hear. So Coach Davis. I tell you guys, it's an honor to be standing here today uh, with my head coach Brian Apple and our staff. You know, just one of the young men that are signing today. You know, today's time, you know, people. I get a lot of credit. But we have an amazing staff, Coach Carter and Coach Michael May. And I'm out of the building doing track season. And I cannot be there. And we don't, we don't, we don't drop the ball. You know, recruit has to stay the same. And in today's time, with the transfer portal, you know, kind of wearing high school kids out, you know, we continue to box it out. You know, I, you know, I told somebody the day, I will continue to fight the portal as hard as I can. I will continue to box every day to make sure that your, you know, your kids have an opportunity to go to school. You know, it doesn't matter what it is, we want your education. Uh, for these young men to be able to pursue their career in the next four years. So I understand this young man, you got a special because of what's going on in college football right now. You know, and one thing about people high school, we don't make no excuses. And I don't make any excuses about a kid not getting out of here. I'm not gonna ever tell a parent what the portal's doing. If I got a job to do, I'm gonna work my tail off to make sure that you parents, you know, are satisfied for whatever I can put on the table for your kids. And so that's why I tell you today's time is different, but you at people high school will continue to box, we'll continue to fight. And we're going to do what we have to do uh, for the collegiate game and so we don't get caught up. So, young man, thank you all so much for buying Apple. Thank you so much, man, for everything you've done for me and allowed me to stand in front today. And thank uh, Coach Wood, our phenomenal 
uh, AD, whatever he is in our program, go to you, led this thing the right way, and uh, I continue to follow your footsteps. Thank you so much, Brian Allen. Like I said, I'm just going to go down the road and um, start on my left and work all the way down to the right, talk about each one of these players and, and, and where they will be signing uh, their letter of intent today. First of all, we have Dale Green. Dale Green will be signing a letter of intent to Western Carolina University in Kaloe, uh, North Carolina, which is between the valley, the valley between the beautiful Smoky Mountains and, and, and the Blue Ridge Mountains. Western Carolina is a public university that was created in 1889 to serve the people living in the mountains of Western Carolina. It has 9,000 undergraduate students. The Catamounts play in the Southern Conference in the Football Championship Division, the FCS. Um, they're coached by former University of Florida great uh, Kerwin Bell and are coming off a 74 season. They play their home games at Bob Waters Field and Whitmire Stadium that seats around 14,000 fans. Dale was a two-year starter on the offensive line, mainly a right guard. He averaged around 86% blocking grade, uh, around 30 big-time blocks, as well as 30 knockdowns over his career. He was part of the offense that set records of rushing last year and passing this year. Dale, will, uh, Dale was a true embodiment of AAA excellence, excellence, taking AP classes as well as being in chorus. Dale's positive attitude, work ethic, and athletic ability has served his team to achieve the successes that we have had. Mr. Dale Green. Next, we have Martrice M.J. Dillard, who signed with Bowling Green University. Bowling Green University is located in Bowling Green, o Ohio, just south of Toledo. Opened in 1914, Bowling Green is a public research university that has an enrollment of 20,000. Bowling Green is an NCAA Division I football program that competes in a Mid-American Conference. Scott Leffler is in his fifth season as head coach of the Falcons. Their home games are played at Doit Perry Stadium. Martrice is the son of Martrice Sr. and Malika Dillard. His stats on the field and contributions were hampered a little bit by several injuries. However, he never, it, that never hindered his leadership and positive attitudes um, leading his teammates. Great job, MJ. Proud of you. He, he goes on to uh, join uh, Eliza Williams, Aiden Wilson, even Malone Van Gorder from years ago. He's a, he's a fourth signee over the last four or five years in our program, the Bowling Green. MJ Dillard. Next, we have Jeremiah Colbert, who's signing with Jacksonville State University. Located in the northwest Alabama town of Jacksonville, Alabama, uh, it was founded in 1883 as a teacher's college and now has six academic schools offering everything from undergraduate up to a doctoral degree. Jacksonville State is a recent addition to the NCAA football bowl division as a, con as a conference member of Conference USA. They are coming off an outstanding season that resulted in the first bowl win in school history as they defeated Louisiana in the New Orleans Bowl this past Saturday. Their mascot is the Gamecocks, and they are coached by Rich Rodriguez, former West Virginia and Michigan head coach. They play their home games at a 24,000 seat capacity, Burgess Snow Field. Jeremiah is joined by his parents, Justin and Kia Colbert, and his mother, Shanice Henderson. Jeremiah uh, brought an elite explosive skill set to our offense and special teams. He has been blessed with a superior speed that led to a kickoff turn touchdown as well as a long touchdown reception. He made our offense and special teams hard to defend just by his presence on the field. Jeremiah has also excelled in track, running a 10.75 and a 100 meter dash. We're going to get that down to a 10.5, right? 10.51, I'm sorry, that's Coach Gilbert, that ain't me. 10.51, that's my fault, Jeremiah, I'm sorry. All right, but proud of Jeremiah and what he brought in this program. Just, just looking forward to what you can do at the next level. Jeremiah Colbert. Next, we have Mr. Jalen Neal, whose mom dressed him today. He swear he dressed himself in. <laughs> you know I had to say that to him. Jalen, know I love him. Jalen is signing a letter of intent to Florida A&M University, or FAMU, as most people know them as. Florida A&M is a public land grant, historically black university. It is the third largest HBCU uh, in the country. It is located in Tallahassee, Florida, and was founded in 1887. It currently serves 10,000 undergraduate students. 
Fan views athletics are known uh, athletics are known as, uh, as their mascot, the Rattlers, and participate in the Southwestern Athletic Conference or the SWAC, which is in the NCAA football championship division. Subdivision, I'm sorry. Their home games are played in the 20,000 seat Bragg Stadium. They are coached by Willie Simmons and went 11 and 1 this past year, earning the SWAC championship this year, as well as a black national uh, black college national championship defeating Howard and Mercedes Benz Dome this past Saturday. Jalen is the son of Nikki Cook. Jalen's career for the Wolves as a running back in a, in a corner. He has been a value contributor that had, had a skill set of physicality, speed, and ball skills. Jalen grew steadily throughout his career and emerged as someone who could be dependent on in practice and in games to help our team be successful. Jalen has shown he has all the skills to be successful at the next level, and there is no doubt, no doubt that arrow is pointing up for, for his future at FAMU. Congratulations, Jalen. Next, Mr. Kobe Blackwell. Kobe Blackwell will be signing a letter of intent to attend the State University of New York at Buffalo in Buffalo, New York. Buffalo is a large research-based university focusing largely on medical education. It is one of the two flagship public universities in New York. It serves around 22,000 students. The Bulls play in the Mid-Atlantic Conference or the MAC and are uh, in the football bowl subdivision and they are coached by Maurice Moe Lindquist. The, um, they defeated Georgia Southern in the Camellia Bowl last year. Kobe is the son of Janina Ramos and Emmanuel Blackwell. Kobe has, has had a productive career as a two-way uh, two player at corner, cornerback and running back. Offensively, he was, he was a multiple threat as well as uh, at, at both running back and a receiver uh, and receiving balls out of the backfield. Defensively, he competed, uh, competed successfully against opponents, uh, any of our opponents' top receivers. He was one of the two players in our program to have a touchdown rushing and receiving as well as an interception. Kobe has taken every challenge that has come his way and will continue to excel at the next level. His abilities and athleticism uh, continues to grow and will no doubt serve him well as he takes the next steps in his career. Congratulations, Kobe. Next, we have Tashaun White. Ty White will be signing a letter of intent to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Located in the Research Triangle in Central North Carolina, UNC is a public research university that is a flagship of North Carolina University system. Their enrollment is around 20,000 undergraduates and has a pre prestigious academic reputation that is not the easiest school to get, get into. Tar Heels are one of the most recognizable logos, even, and even it has its own color. They are in the NCAA football, so, uh, fo football bowl subdivision that is charter member of the a Atlanta, uh, Atlantic Coast Conference and is coached by legendary national champion Coach Mack Brown. Ty's parents are Angela Farley and Mark White. Ty has been a three-year starter and played a lot as a freshman for us, even getting some playing time um, early on in his career. He has a he, he has multifaceted player, uh, that has played safety, receiver, kick returner, even probably was an emergency quarterback for us at times. Ty had over 40 receptions for his career and was a consistent threat all over the field on our offense. On defense, on defense he showed instinct and command of our advanced schemes that helped him get the defenses lined up and be in the best place to make plays. At the same, at the same time, he brought this, uh, a superior physicality to stopping the run. Ty White would go down as one of the most skilled players to ever uh, play here but most importantly, he never had a bad day. He consistently has a smile on his face and exudes confidence and positivity to make a difference uh, around his teammates, around his peers, and around his school. Congratulations, Ty White. <laughs> Next, Dylan Rowland. <laughs> Dylan will be signing a letter of intent with the University of Nebraska in Lincoln, Nebraska. Nebraska is the state's oldest academic institution, founded in 1869. It serves around 24,000 students and is a highly respected institution for academic research. Their teams are known as the Cornhuskers and play in Memorial Stadium at Tom Osborne Field that seats 85,000 people. The Cornhuskers are considered college football royalty, claiming nine national championships, 46 conference titles, and three Heisman Trophy winners. 
They're currently, they currently play in the Big Ten Conference and are coached by Matt Rule. Dylan is a son of Dominic and Yvonne Riola. Dylan's playing career and, and season as a quarterback at Buford High School has been um, second to few who have ever played the game. His skills at quarterback, his skills as a quarterback are evident by anyone who sees him play, which led him to set every passing record in school history. 2,818 passing yards, 63% completion percentage, 34 touchdowns, and one interception. But what sets him apart is his work ethic, mind for the game, his character, his love for his team, and most of all, his family. We could list all of his accolades and praise uh, from the football world, but Dylan is an outstanding young man that cares deeply about others as well as his faith. There's no, that, no doubt that Dylan Raula will make a difference to those around him, whether it be on or off the football field. Mr. Dylan Raula. Next, Andrew Houston, signer with the Ohio State University. Ohio State is the largest public research university that has 50,000 undergraduate students and is located in Columbus, Ohio. The Buckeyes are a charter member of the Big Ten Conference as well as NCAA Football Bowl Subdivision. They have eight national titles and uh, 41 conference titles. They are coached by Ryan Day and are yearly contenders for conference and national titles. They play their home games at the legendary horseshoe that seats 102,000 fans. Edges Parents are Sorbin uh, Leslie and Peter Moon. Edric's, Edric leaves a legacy as a three-year starter on the defensive line and a tremendously disruptive force. He consistently made opponents run away from his side, greatly benefit, benefiting the stats of his teammates. In spite of that, Edric is one of the top sack artists in school history with 21 over his career, as well as uh, a great kick blocker with five over his career. That might lead, to, lead us in... Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the most in history. Honestly, I don't, know, I don't know that for sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. Besides all this, if you ask anyone in the community, Edric is probably one of the most beloved players that, ha that has ever been a part of our program. Young and old, teacher or athlete, Edric is embraced by all and takes time to encourage all. His kind heart and friendly demeanor has, has made such an impact here and, and will continue to be an integral part of the community um, up in Columbus. Edric Houston. Last but not least, KJ Bowman. KJ will be signing a letter of intent to play at the University of Georgia. UGA is located in Athens and is the oldest public university in the country, opening in 1789. It is a well-respected research university that has 30,000 undergraduate students and is a flagship institution of the Georgia University system. The Bulldogs are an NCAA bowl subdivision school that competes in the, in the SEC. They play their home games at, at one of the largest on-campus stadiums in the country, Sanford Stadium at Dooley Field, and are coached by two-time national champion, championship coach Kirby Smart. KJ's parents are Lakeisha and Kai Bolden, KJ leaves our program with some really large shoes to fill um, to the tremendous accomplishments that he, that he leaves behind. He is a two-year, two-way starter at safety and receiver and kick returner. The highlight of his career would go down as one of the most unique accomplishments in, school, in our school's prestigious history. No one's ever done this before, and I'm not sure if anybody's ever done this before in the state of Georgia. Four touchdowns in the game, four different ways. Kickoff return, rushing, receiving, and interception. Um, and the kickoff return, I believe, and the interception uh, happened within like 35 or 40 seconds of each other. So it was like, you know, it, it was amazing what happened in, in those couple minutes when we were over at the Cuba that night. His catch to a touchdown ratio was almost as impressive, 27 catches and 17 receiving touchdowns. He was a threat anywhere on the field. On top of all that, KJ grew and matured as a leader a, a, as much as any senior we have ever had. You know, KJ came a long way from when he was a freshman, and, and he'll tell a lot of you guys that, that, you know, the stuff that, you know, he thought he knew at that time, and, and the person he grew into was probably somebody he couldn't see at this moment, but we're just proud of what he did and, and how he feels that. That makes the legacy of, of, of him in this class uh, even larger. KJ will be a joy to watch over the coming years as he, as he continues to grow 
and compete at the highest level possible. Mr. K.J. Bowman. All right, now, we're done with our, 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 this part of the, um, of the program. I know we have tables outside for the, for the kids. If they want to, y'all want to, parents want to decorate those tables so they can take pictures. We also will have them up here for a second to take a couple pictures with coaches first, parents second. I know we have a bunch of people that want to do interviews with some of you guys, so we'll be here for a minute. So I appreciate you guys coming out. It's probably one of the best signing days we've had, and at least the, the most people we've had here in here on signing day. And I just appreciate your continued support of these kids at the next level and us as a program at Buford High School. Go Wolves. Thank you.